Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ainsley Teigen. Today I'm going to be taking you guys through what my step-by-step -step process looks like when I'm creating an oil pastel portrait. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what I do. Don't forget to smash that like button and comment down below what you think. Let's get into it. I usually start out by making sure I have my right colors blended out and make sure that they look good on another page just to test them. I then usually darken or firm up my line. In this case, it's actually a whole shade darker because I realized I wanted to do a little bit darker, different um, shade of this teal color for my base. I usually firm up those lines, kind of go over everything, make sure I've made all my final decisions that everything is placed where I want it to be. and. That's my first step. The second thing I do is usually fill in with my darkest shade um, crayon, my oil pastel, and I go in and I fill in all the places where I want dark shadows or I know it's going to be the darkest color in the drawing. So right now I'm doing the eyebrows. Uh, the eyebrows are always a really dark color. Um, the shadows, the nostrils, maybe in the cheeks, or the shadows around the nose. I'll go around and do the darkest parts. Usually I do that first. I like to lay it down a lot of the color that I know is going to be on the lips towards the beginning of the drawing. Um, I don't know why I kind of always gravitate towards, um, you know, the lips. Sometimes I'll start off with an eye or a little bit of the dark parts of the nose. On this one, I did move to the lips pretty quickly on the shadows. And then I, the next thing I do is usually start in on the medium color. Sometimes if it's a, you know, multicolor drawing, say I'm doing um, blue to green, I'll put in the lightest color green in the highlights area. So tip of the nose, um, you know, in the cheeks, chin, on parts of the lips, you know, the highlighted area. So the lightest color parts of the drawing, just to highlight where I know I'm not going to cover up with a darker color. So I'll highlight them, but in this one, my lightest color is actually white. I was using like a dark teal, like a light kind of more green teal, and then white as my lightest tone to blend everything together. So I didn't do that this time. This time I stuck with the medium color second and then moved on from there. When I go to actually start shading in, filling in the lips, I like to make sure to block out the highlights that I know I'm gonna keep the lightest color or even white. So I block them out and I don't put any color in them to start with at all. I leave them completely white just as the page. Then I go in with my medium color and I kind of fill in all of the spots where or, that are away from the highlight and then I blend the darkest color and medium color together, leaving the highlights open. I will then blend in the highlight color, which in this case was white, to finish off the lips. Next up is the nose, and you guys already know, I like to start out with those strong lines, like I said before, and then I start filling in the darker parts that I know are gonna be there already. So around the bottom, around the already really dark firm line, and going up from there. I'm gonna know where I'm gonna see shadows and dents and spaces where they're gonna be darker, and then I go into blending with other colors. I always know I have that highlight at the tip of the nose, which is like a really nice circle, and then I have that kind of really light line that goes straight up as well. After blocking out all the colors and figuring out where my shadows are, then I just blend all together. I always leave the upper lip at quite a light color as I see a lot of light tends to catch that area and shine pretty brightly. When using white as your lightest color, you kind of have to get some interesting blending techniques down. So this time I used the medium color and I just lightly kind of scribbled across and then blended it out with the white to make it a smooth light color, but it wasn't stark white. Next up, the eyes. I usually don't do the eyes very first. I kind of wait till I get a little bit of the lips and nose done like you see here because I want to see where the rest of the drawing is going and kind of wait for the eyes to be filled in later after I make sure I'm liking where this drawing goes. I like to take up and of course firm up the lines a little bit more and really make sure I don't, it's such a small area, so I don't want to cover up where the highlights are supposed to be too much. So I have to be careful not to fill in too many dark colors where my lights are supposed to be. 
use in the eyes I usually do use the lightest color as kind of my blending tool and if it's too strong too light too if it, if it looks over blended that way or if it looks under blended that way I can go in with oil or my finger later to smooth it out I think the eyes are actually one of the most important elements of my portraits and that's why you see here I did around the eyes but I didn't actually fill in the iris and the iris is normally one of the very last things that I do um, not always the very last but they're definitely towards the end I first of all I want them to look nice I don't want them to get messed up with me you know rubbing my hand all over them getting them smudgy or looking bad but I really want to make sure that I capture the portrait and what the portrait is trying to portray the feeling and the emotion and the message that I'm trying to get across. I will always squeeze in some detail work or blending work before moving on to the next portion of the face. When drawing the chin, I don't always put in these strong shadows below the lips. But, it, but this portrait needed it, and this portrait had those shadows, so I needed to put them in. So I usually do a dark, it's sort of a rectangle type shape at the angle of the lips, how the lips, you know, kind of purse or go up where a natural shadow would fall. I do not do it absolutely right against the lips, but a little bit below, but not too far off. I then sandwich that in between two lighter parts of the face. So up against the lip is going to be lighter and then below the shadow is going to be a lot lighter as well. And of course lots and lots of more blending will come soon. The next step in the portrait process is the cheeks. I'm going to use the same technique that I did to blend in the upper lip and kind of scribble in that medium color but not do it too densely or too firmly. Then I'm going to go in with my white to blend it out and lighten up the parts that I want lightened and I'm going to go back in with the two different teals to darken up the dark parts. The cheeks and the connective areas around the nose, the mouth, the upper lip, and the eyes can take a while for me to get to where I like them and for me to actually get them down to where I say that they're finished, especially if I'm not exactly sure where the shadows and highlights lay just yet. One of the things I like to do now that we're at this point in the process is to blend everything out. Everything that looks too smudgy or too harsh, I like to blend it out. I am always very careful with the eyes as I've messed up quite a few different eyes with the smudging and trying to not get the white, you know, too stark white, but also trying not to smudge the blue or the purple, whatever color the iris is, into the white. So that one's quite a delicate process. The last step is usually the forehead. The forehead, the whole top of the rest of the head, is usually the last part because it, for in my portraits, it usually shows less emotion than the other parts of the face and it's easiest to do at the end. The forehead requires a lot of blending and a lot of guessing where shadows are coming off from the edge of the paper. The very last step in my portrait making process is for me to look at all the details that I want to fix and I want to add, and then of course one more round of blending pretty much the entire face. Make sure there's no nicks or anything else, just the little fine details. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button, comment down below what you think, and subscribe so you never miss another video from me. I'll see you guys next time.